you're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. All right. I should have gotten into voice work. Yeah, there's still time. I don't think so. I think time's run out. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> I could have definitely been the guy that did all the trailers. You still can. Right? Do you know that that's like the same guy? Not all the trailers, but the vast majority of trailers. Like, yes. And he's been doing them since like we were kids. Yeah. So I bet give you me know a his trailer. name. Give I you a trailer. Name, I can't give you a uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> Ferris Bueller's <laughs> Day Off. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't get into trailer. John Wick for no, no, no. I can't do it right now. Now I'm on the spot. And You're I'm on panicking. the spot. Yeah. yeah, you'd be really good at it. I have a good, um, I have a good voice for radio. It turns out you do, but uh, works for podcasting too. You know, it's handy. <laughs> here we are folks this is episode 348 of the podcast we're fastly approaching <laughs> episode all, 350 all i can think of is she's talking like kermit now throughout the rest of the pop pop not the popsicle what is this a podcast the podcast but through the popcast the popcast yeah talking like kermit like kermit i don't know i don't i don't, I don't think i can do voices i no. i wasn't like um that's not what i'm meaning i was like if you like if your voice was like Kermit, oh, and you're like so you doing just a podcast. And you're like, that's how you the and, and trying to like host. listen to the podcast. I mean, which you know, if you got a voice like Kermit, there's people for you. Don't let that stop you from doing a podcast. I think Jim Henson did the voice of Kermit. I, I don't know. Do you know who Jim Henson is? Oh, is he the one that did the voice of Kermit? Oh, baby, <laughs> Jim Henson is the like the Muppet guy. The yeah, like the, he's the founder. Like he's the Muppets. Jim he's Hansen. the Muppets? He's the, I don't know if it founder is the right word or not. It's like, he's the Muppets and the one guy is the voice for all trailers. But, um, no, he's like the, the Muppet guy. He founded he's, the Muppets. Like the, he created the Muppets. He created the Muppets. Mm-hmm. I wonder from American what puppeteer. Trip that was. James Murray Henson was an American puppeteer, animator, cartoonist, actor, inventor, and filmmaker who achieved worldwide notice as the great, as I'll, I'll put great into that sentence, the right? great creator of the Muppets. Guess what else he also did? What did he do? Fraggle Rock. Guess what films he directed? Down to Fraggle Rock. I bet you can guess what films he directed uh, based off of knowing that he created uh, the Muppets and that he created Fraggle Rock. Sweetheart, do you know who you're talking to? I do. Just pause and think for a okay, moment. Okay. Fra- um, he, he also did. So think did... about the time period. Okay. So we're in the 80s. Okay. So did he do, like, did he do Labyrinth? Yes. Or, okay. See, right. he yeah. was the director of Labyrinth and one more. Okay, and uh, ooh. I feel like I can get this. I can get this. Labyrinth and one more. Dark Crystal. I was going to say that, but I thought that was too old. <laughs> that was the same time period. Is it? Yeah. Because it was like, because when you look at the Labyrinth and you look at the Dark Crystal, those are two very different like the dark crystal, you see like the little legs under the people. And I don't feel like you have that in the labyrinth. So I was thinking those time periods were far too separated. Anyways, so he, cool. he was the voice of Kermit. He was the voice of mm-hmm. Kermit. Up until Well, you death. heard it here on the Energy is Love podcast. <laughs> so Did so we many, learn that together? There's so many people listening. How that many are like, people are just are learning Muppets? that with me? Who's Kermit? <laughs> I bet if we ask the kids if like, hey, do you know who Kermit is? They'd be like, what are you talking about? Who? I don't know. They might. I don't think so. Yeah? Yeah. I, I know that we've like circled around. There's been some uh, ticky talks mm-hmm. of people like these kids, these younger generations thinking how great of an idea it would be. To it, get a house phone. Right? <laughs> if there was like, I'm serious. I know. I'm fucking serious. Like, I saw it. Did you? <laughs> And I was like, that's how, that's... No, no, hear me out. Right? So it's just a phone that just, stays at the house. So you get a cell phone. Everybody can use it. It's completely dedicated just to house. just the house. So then that way, everybody in the house can use it. It's kept right. in the same spot. So you'll never lose it. And it's just for the house. I think this this might take off. Right? <laughs> it, it just like, it had me... Um, I was just like, wow, wow, that's that's a that's a full circle right there. <laughs> that's a full circle in our early forties. Like, I feel like we needed more time for that full circle, but no. Nope. You and I are getting those on a weekly basis. Full circles. Just the awareness of how old we are, right? But forty doesn't feel old. 
It doesn't feel old, but you know what does feel old? By the way, we're not 40. I'm 42, and Steph is 42 as well. Hmm. Sorry, I had to I'm catch not sure myself. What the, yeah, yeah. Your birthday's <laughs> you another sure month did. away. You sure did. You sure did. I wasn't sure where you were going with that. No, 40 doesn't feel old. 40, early 40s, 42, to be exact, doesn't feel old. Mm -hmm. But saying was born in the 1980s, born 1980, I'm like, oh, that sounds old. I don't think so. Well. But that's because I was born in 81. Yeah. Also, you think you're so much younger. Oh, I so, okay. you know, I'm a spring no, chicken. No, it totally does. It totally does. <laughs> and then I had, like, I was watching. You know what um, seems old to me? What's that? If you say you're born in the 60s. Yeah. That to me is like, fuck, that person's old. <laughs> I was watching uh, music videos yesterday and not on MTV, like the Samsung TV just has like these like music channels. Mm -hmm. And um, now I know this is a common thing, but we don't have cable. So we haven't had like this one's dedicated on. to the 80s. Hold on, hold on. Like the listen people. I have a really good idea. So it's a, I'm not it's saying a it was my TV idea. channel that is just dedicated <sighs> to music. Okay. what? Well, we could call it like music TV or something. <laughs> It's it? multiple channels that are dedicated <laughs> to a specific genre, which, by the way, I disagree with the commercials they had on there. Because first of all, like no commercials. And two, the only commercials they had on there were of silent clips of music videos. I'm like, why are you wasting my like? That's play the, play the, So I was, I was angry. I had. Are to they stop. like old music videos from? If you're watching the back older in the channels, day when they had silent movies. So when I was on the '80s channel and the commercial was like a bunch of clips of mm -hmm. 80 music, I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm here because this is <laughs> '80s. So just like play those. <laughs> right. And then I got to the '90s and I was like, ooh, got excited, right? And then I went to a commercial and just showed me a bunch of 90s clips and I was frustrated. Um, anyways, there was a part of it and it had, ret oh, what was it? It was retro, like retro music. And it was playing some 41 as retro. And I was like, Did they no, that's not retro. Hey, when we that's, started, when I started hearing me, our music on, on the, the oldies oldies channel, station, that really had, I about like, drove I the had car to right off the minute. road. I had to start putting pieces together. I'm like. Okay, this song definitely came out in my lifetime. Right. I had this CD. I remember it coming I've out. I've sung this song many times while driving. Why is this now on the oldie right? station? And it's still I, on the oldie station with what songs I think are oldies, right? like shit from the 60s. I think, yeah, I'm like playing <clears throat> the doo-wops, like that's the oldies and I'm loving it. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Don't, don't think that, you know, shit that came out in the 90s is oldies. This is such an this interesting hurts. phase like, of life. It is. It really is. It's like you're trying to. Do you remember? I feel like our like parents are just laughing at us right now. But do you remember all throughout like quote unquote adulthood, right? Like you become an adult at yeah. 18, which obviously like is the ridiculous. only reason I think that was ever like the thing was because they had to pick a random age to where they right? could start sending people to war. So while your brain's still literally not developed yet, yeah. that's a good time because <clears throat> it's still programmable. Anyways. I remember all throughout my adult life, mm -hmm. and that's a term that I use very lightly. Yeah, well, thinking, man, I don't feel like an adult. When is I? When am I going to get to the point where I start feeling like an adult? <laughs> Maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. Maybe when you start recognizing that, like, when you start laughing at the kid that thinks that a house phone's a good idea, right? Or you hear songs that you sung as a teenager on the oldie station. Maybe that's when you're, that's when, like, that's so maybe like, we just started adulthood. Maybe that's like, that's it. You're right. When you get your like AARP, which we have not caught yet because we're not old enough for that. Thank you. Right. In the mail, they're like, <laughs> you're not an adult to you're a senior citizen. <laughs> no, I think those people are old. I'm not talking about old. Right. We're just adults now. We're just adults. We're just adults. Yeah, we're not you know kids what? anymore. I we're love, adults now. You're like so focused on that. I'll hear you talk to the kids and be like, how does it feel like to be an adult? Do you feel like an adult? I'm like they're <laughs> I know they're children, aren't they? Well, it's just like literally like none of them have hit the age where their brain is fully developed yet. Do you know why I asked them that question? Why? Because I want to like honor them because they think they're adults. Okay. So oh. I want to like you I know, see what I you're be doing. Like, hey, 
this is where you I think see you're you at as in an life, adult. right? And yeah. I want to honor that. And I'm like, what's it feel like? So it's not condescending? No, I hope not. <laughs> if they listen to this, now they know. But <laughs> we know the kids don't listen to the podcast, so we're good. Like, what kid wants to sit there and listen to their parents talk? You know, parents have been trying to get them to listen to them talk. And one day, one day, maybe. One day, I think they well, will. Well, you know what? You have that, right? You had those like eight millimeter tapes for like the one day we're going to look back on these. And then the VH t- tapes and then the little VH tapes tapes and then now all the digital that gets lost because you can't find in these podcasts like by the time they get there nobody's going to be able to find these podcasts there's going to be on yeah, some will. other platform some other thing it will be on the hard drive that i've got all of our episodes on and then but they you, can just listen to them. i have a i have a hard drive that i can't access well and my heart is broken for that would you want to listen to like imagine if your parents sat down mm-hmm. week after week for 300 plus episodes and who knows we're not stopping anytime soon so right like, you know a thousand episodes I don't know. would you want to sit down like one, how fun one would that be menstrual cycle away from saying fuck this <laughs> <laughs> like, I <don't> know. <laughs> like i think that would be really interesting i would listen actually i think at a certain point in your life i think i mean yeah there's definitely phases in my life where i don't i don't want to listen yeah and like looking back like maybe after they're dead or something i don't know yeah I think it would be really fascinating. I only know what they, who they are. Based off of what they've told you. Who, what they've told me, but who they are in front of me. Right. And who they tell me that they are when they're not in front of me. And I have like, I have, you know, 40 years of research of them in front of me that has. Confirmation bias Determined, research. exactly. <laughs> selective evidence gathering. That's why I said of information in front of me mm-hmm. of who they are when they're not around me. Mm-hmm. Because this equals this. 40 years of seeing this, my brain is like, boom. But I also know that that is not true. That they're somebody else. Maybe. Maybe they're the same people. Maybe they are. But. It would be very interesting to learn about them, not through the way they retell stories from the persona of who they are in front of me, but actually like, who are they when they're not in front of me, when they're not in front of kids? Because I bet those people are quite interesting. I used to think that all the time about my dad. Yeah. Because my dad had a job where he was gone, you know, three days, four days out of the week. And he, like, would talk about the range where he worked. That's Mm -hmm. what, you know, that's what he referred to it as. Because it was a military base. And he was uh, security, basically. And, like, he would talk about the other guys that he worked with. And it was so clear to me growing up that he had a completely other life that I knew nothing about. Really? Yeah. That was never clear to me. That it was like, that was a part of his life that was separate from like this life that he had at home. And I knew nothing about it. And I was so curious about it. I remember I only went out to his work maybe once or twice. I know that there's a time that when I was an adult, again, right, not in the last two years because we just figured out that we don't actually become adults until we're 40, yeah, but right. in my childhood. <laughs> so all you like 30-something, you're like, fuck, don't worry, you're not there yet. You yeah. said that time, go in have fun. In my teen years when I was in my 20s, I remember <laughs> going out there. and <laughs> um, so when I was in my 20s. <laughs> yeah. So I have memory of that. And then I think there was one other uh, time when I was an actual, like when I was a child, but I don't have any memory of that. Anyways. No. Yeah. I was always fascinated. I'm like, there's a side of my dad that I've never seen before, but I can tell that it's there. Like I could tell that Mm. there was something. And I think that's what, like if our kids listen to this, it's who knows, right? Right. I'm definitely projecting, but I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if, like I wonder what it would be like. I wonder if they would be like, who are those people? Or if they would be like, yeah, that's that's them. Mm -hmm. That's them. I I don't know. I do know that... Yeah, I don't know. Is there parts of us that we don't want the kids to see? I mean, quick question. I mean, that's an easy, quick answer of yes. But is that healthy? Um, I think (laughs) I don't know that there's parts of me that I don't want the kids to see. I want them to see all of it. Um, Not so like they can see me, but I want them to see all of it so they can um, they have the ability 
to undo the damage that I caused. So if they can see everything, they can unchain those like that generational shit and those things where they think anything was like their fault. So like just like they see it all. They know like that. Oh, that's that's your fucked up shit. That had nothing to do with me. So even though we're like actively working on it and trying our best, there was there's still a lot of years where I was not actively working on it. it was just surviving and doing my best, which was, I was doing my best, right? And I can look at that with love for myself, but full awareness and full accountability of, oh my God, I am so sorry. Mm, yeah. And like, I will be accountable to you for all of it so I do I want them to see so they can be free be free <laughs> and like allow themselves to be themselves their own people without this bullshit that I was like here apparently this is something I'm supposed to give to you <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> right the right? subconscious things hey right? this was passed down to me I don't know what to fucking do with it. Like, so, we, just, we just keep giving, we give this, this to our kids, is, right? This is yours now. Uh, we, we like to call it the box of shame and guilt and remorse and trauma and abuse. Yeah. And I don't know, I, I didn't do much else with it other than hold on to it and carry it. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and pass this down yeah. on to you. Good this luck. This is yours. Figure it out. It's like <sighs> Pandora's box, right? right? We haven't figured out how to open up that box. And it just kept getting, like every mm -hmm. generation just added more duct right. tape to it and more locks and more chains. And then eventually somebody's like strong mm -hmm. enough to open up that box and recognize what's right. in there. Right. Yeah. And like that is absolutely true. And I can see the flip side of how every generation took has a little been bit off. taking it off. Yeah. I can see how like like information I have about my great grandma and then some of the stuff that my Nana did that mm -hmm. was like and then like my mom, like holy shit. Welcome Black Sheep, right? She was the first one to really like embrace that and then shame herself for it. But like she started taking stuff off and through her best while she was wrapping her own shit on there and handing it to me and like duct taping me to it, she was trying to help me unravel it. And as like that is handled. So we're putting it on and we're taking off, we're doing our best and we just have to, we have to do better. <laughs> we so, do have to like be accountable. And, <clears throat> Are you ready for the big esoteric thing that I want to... My big esoteric tangent for yeah. the podcast today. Tangent time with Craig. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Jingle? No. no. Uh, segment. That's segment. a good segment for the podcast. A good segment. Here we go on Tan this tangent. tangent. So this concept that we just mm. jokingly, metaphorically talked about yeah. of passing down this Pandora's box of uh shit that every generation does their best to unpack one layer of or half a layer mm -hmm. of or maybe no layers of right yeah maybe you don't even I right. think everybody's gotta be trying right yeah everybody tries i yeah, think a little i think bit. so i hope so right <laughs> i like to think so but um <clears throat> the big esoteric tangent is it's one box and it's not just your lineage or my family or my generations or our children or our grandparents it's the human race and it's like inside the box is the one truth the one truth and we because we're all this like because we're the universal consciousness having this experience mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, we're just continually going towards that one truth through all these iterations of ourselves. One box, one truth, but we just all have our different tones of duct tape that we add to it. Well, it's not even add to it. We're no. actually taking it off. We're all taking it off. Okay. And the Keep truth going. is, right, that we're, uh, we are the unconditional love that exists yeah. in the universe, that we are the source <laughs> of all things. One so truth. when that Pandora's box actually opens up, it's just love. then you realize, oh, none of this, like, none of this mattered. Right. All that pain, all that suffering, all that trauma, everything that I went through, everything that I survived, everything that my, you know, grandparents, great-grandparents, mothers, fathers, kids, none of it mattered. Yeah. 
because it didn't change this mm. truth that was held inside of that box. And we all have to get there and open up that box. But it's really just like the singularity of the universe that is having that experience. Interesting. So I thought like here. Here we uh, go. I told you we said it was be, tangent. It was tangent, tangent right? time. And it goes back to the earlier jokingly conversation about kids today not realizing that we had house phones. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, they're going to come up with Walkmans. Right. They'll no, hear me out. Like, you don't actually have to use your phone. We've got these cool things that you can put. We call them tapes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this little Tape. this little cassette that you put music on, and then you put these into these devices. Nope, it's not digital. You're going to love it. <laughs> Anyways. Um, everything goes around that comes around, right? Like mm -hmm. the idea that all of these things like fashion trends, these funny concepts, uh, <clears throat> everything eventually comes around again. Mm -hmm. Because back to it's just the singularity, like the universe is just having this experience over and over and over again through the lens of all of us. So the universe is looking through your eyes. It's looking through my eyes. It's looking through the other 7 billion eyes. Well, that's 14 billion, 0.3 billion, 6.56 eyes. I was going to say, you know, like, some people don't have two eyes. That's math. Well, that. That's true. I guess we so got That was uh, very ableist. Right. Um, but it's looking through all of us. I'm very sorry. To have this experience. And the reason why things keep coming up that again is because... You are not paying attention. To I'm my sorry. Tangents. I just got like really overwhelmed by what I just said. I'm like, if I'm, then I was like, if that was insensitive, I'm sorry. I'm like, that was insensitive. <laughs> like to be like, if that was offensive, then I'm sorry. Like, no, like apologize. So I was in my head of the fact that I was just like rude and insensitive. And then my apology not even being a accurate apology. So you're right. I wasn't. I'm sorry. My head. The AD, like I'm squirrely today. Please go back to your tangent. Okay. I'm trying. You're doing great. And the reason why it keeps coming back up again is because it's the unit. Like it's think of it like this is the way that I'm thinking of it lately where like there's a part of expansion and evolution that takes place in the in the greater scheme of things like in the universe continually expanding on itself. Right. Not inwards, but outwards on itself and also inwards at the same time. But in order for that to take place, it has this experience. I don't know. I don't. I think I'm going to get too lost in this. Maybe I haven't fleshed this one out enough. Maybe tangent's over. Maybe this segment's dead. It was a temporary, it was a teaser tangent. Yeah, it was dead before it even got no, out No, no, it was just a teaser. It's coming. It's just not fully formed yet. It's not dead. <laughs> It's just it was a, it was a trailer tangent. It was a ta trailer for the tangent. Use your trailer voice. Now's your time. See how we brought it all back Coming in together. Next week. <laughs> Have you ever thought? Um, no, I I don't know because it was good in my head, and then when yeah. I tried to get it out, it didn't quite make sense. That's what she said. <laughs> it's good in my head, but that because it does just come back again. Yeah. Like we're experiencing the same thing with childhood, mm -hmm. where like. The traumas of our childhood are just coming back. Yeah. They're not, they, they didn't go anywhere. Nope. Right? The the retro of your life is, ha ha, here's your trauma from your childhood coming back to be healed. Yeah. So maybe that's just an aspect of what's happening is the universe keeps bringing back fashion trends because we need to heal. Because they need to, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying there. My brain was like, you think we need to heal from bad fashion. Because but see, it's like the, the bad like fashion. It, I is, get it. Is the externalization like that's of what that puts you in that, that like happens. mindset, and you see like where you are. So yes. it's like you you're getting the error that you're healing. Yeah, which is funny because like as we're on to like rights being taken away and right, all of this so we're stuff, healing so we're healing the 70s. We're like going back and like whoom. Well, it's not just the 70s, but right? you know, like the, like all the drug law, same thing, right? Mm -hmm. All the drug law that went into place in the 60s and 70s. Now we're seeing mm -hmm. that coming back into uh, our zeitgeist of the culture and society where we're trying to get all these amazing psychedelics legalized so that we can actually start healing. Mm -hmm. So they're coming back again because yeah. there's a part of what that thing represented 
or not represented. There's a part of what that thing represented like that needs to heal in society, that needs to heal in culture. So there's a wound there. There's a trauma there. And when they're really big traumas, which these ones are, right, mm -hmm. like human rights and sovereignty and like the ability to just see and love and accept everybody for who they are yeah. and allow for that to like exist. Yeah, not who you think they should be or who makes you comfortable. <clears throat> That's going to keep coming back mm -hmm. over and over and over Probably. again until the universe is like, cool, we nailed it. <laughs> right, we got it. Everybody's loved. Right, okay. everybody gets to that point. But it involves, like, think about it from the micro to the macro, like big to little. Mm -hmm. And so I have to individually get to the point where I recognize just me, myself, as I sit here today, talking like this, in this voice, in this really annoying thing that's about to drive you nuts, and dr rambling on and not getting to the point and pushing it further and further and making you more and more frustrated, that alone, mm -hmm. where I'm at today, mm -hmm. I am worthy of love. Oh, yeah. I don't have to Absolutely. do anything else. I, I'm innocent, woo -woo. I'm pure, and I'm loved unconditionally. And every version of not me, mm -hmm. because I'm just a version of it, right? I'm just a version of the universe. I'm just an avatar that the universe is looking through my eyes to mm -hmm. see and experience and process oh, and heal. Yes. So every version of the universe has to not has to right nobody's forcing you that's the beauty of it is right. you get the free will to choose but like that is the end game like that is pandora's box when you open up and recognize that you are worthy of unconditional love just as you are today <laughs> yes. because you stem from like you Ooh. are birthed out of like you are unconditional love so so then I'm liking what you're dropping today for sure. Right. And that then we really all beautiful. just have to get there. Yeah. And you get the choice of however long that's going to take. And like the universe, maybe the universe, think about it this way. This is really interesting too. It turns out the tangent continued folks. Yeah. <laughs> like when you, like if you run one test mm -hmm. and you're trying to get that test to give you, like if we're scientific about it, right. And we, we run one test and we're trying to get this result. Like we have to run that test sometimes 10,000 times to get the result that we're testing for. Like if the test is I'm loved unconditionally, no matter what, how many times would we have to run that test until we believed it? Because we would have to do everything to like prove I'm loved unconditionally, even if oh, what? I like destroy the planet. I'm loved unconditionally, even if I murder somebody. I'm loved unconditionally, even if I'm a dictator that, you know, enslaves a country. I'm loved unconditionally, even if I don't contribute to society in any way. Like, maybe that's why it has continually expanded to where we're at 7 billion people because we're trying to run that test to get to that one singular truth. And you have to run it out. Like you have to run it That's out That's like infinitely. exactly what like a computer simulation would do. Exactly, like right? Like testing it out, like all the algorithms, like, like freaking war games, that mm -hmm. old 80s movie That's show. A good trailer. Movie show, right? Movie show, that's what it is. Craig. You love Matthew Broderick in Ferris Bueller's right? Days Off. How does all of it connect? Synchronistic, right? So I think you just like thought? really just like. Okay. Now, I realize that you and I are like we're partners. We're in this like I, I am naturally biased to you. And also I call you out on your shit mm -hmm. so i'm over here with like that full awareness but i'm like i think you just unlocked it <laughs> like that clicks on somewhere like we're all like that goes back to the egg theory that we talked about before and how just like we're running all of these simulations this is like oh oh and also like what was that one show we watched mirror something the mirror black mirror black mirror that's it <laughs> <laughs> i knew it was a mirror <laughs> where it was the one where they like that find your soulmate yeah one and like they had to 
keep going through the simulation of where they would decide to leave it because they wanted to be together and how many times they chose to like escape it together and all they had to go through all these different simulations to show it and everybody's talking about how like this is a simulation this is the matrix so we're just literally going through that individually all connected just realizing that we are unconditionally loved that we are unconditional love right wow craig stemming back to the source of where we actually came from i don't i don't know what else like i guess the podcast is over <laughs> i like what else is there to talk about that's, that's it. it we're unconditional love done, turned done, out done. that we figured it out you're welcome what's and the secret of life it you are unconditional love and you are episodes. unconditionally loved and <laughs> Get, you heard it. It's proof right there. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? it? N- that it's just all of these simulations yeah. trying to solve, not not trying to solve, it's just trying to prove mm-hmm. the singularity. Like it's trying to prove the one thing yeah. that we are love. Which kids testing the boundaries. Do you still love me? Yes. Right. And you do. And that's why we, I mean, it's, oh go ahead. No, I'm just like, I'm super allergy, itchy, achy over here. So I'm super fidgety and all of the Mm -hmm. stuff. So that's all. It wasn't a, oh, I had something to say. It was, oh, my eye itched. I had to take my glasses off and the headphones are saying cricket on my head because I can't have it on my ear. It was all, nothing profound. Do you spend time thinking about like, I'm, because I've been thinking about this lately where I'm the avatar having this experience in this virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And you Mm -hmm. are in my virtual reality as an avatar. You're so lucky. I am. However, the source of what is viewing your consciousness and the source of what is viewing my consciousness Mm -hmm. is the same source. So we aren't separate. We are the same. Yeah. And then like it's like we've had this conversation before, but it like just bears to repeat. It bears repeating. What do you need? What do I need? Yeah. I, I feel need. like you're like, I'm just like trying to see like am I. It just trips me the fuck out yeah. and I keep expanding it. So mm-hmm. it's easy for me to see with you and me because you and I have so many similarities. Yeah. Like every single time, every single time, a hundred percent of the time. When you and I are disconnected and when we are Mm -hmm. really stuck at odds with each other and then when we're really like struggling to connect and we're like stuck in this space where we think it's the other person Mm -hmm. and like every single time we get stuck in those spots, we eventually, and sometimes we don't do this. Sometimes we go around another trip of the same shit. (laughs) Sometimes. Right. But we eventually get to the realization that we're feeling the same thing. Mm Mm-hmm that we're coming from the same place and that we're having the same experience. It's just simply through the lens of how we're seeing the situation, which proves to me like it's like that in itself is proving to me, cool. We're the same thing. We're the same thing having the same experience just through two different lenses and two different avatars, which means, you know, the male lady out there delivering our mail, same thing. She's the same as us. She just has a different lens and a different perspective. So everything that I'm encountering in the world, and that's the other cool part, is it's not just the human avatar. Yeah. Right? It's not just the people that we encounter. Yeah, it's not just people with consciousness. Yes. So we're surrounded by trees and animals Mm -hmm. and bugs and bees and squirrels and possums that are scary as they like zombie walk across the road (laughs) and almost cause us to, you know, walk up the brakes. Like all of those things, same consciousness, Mm -hmm. same source of energy, same unconditional love, Mm -hmm. having this experience. Do you believe that something has to be living and breathing to have a consciousness? No, of course not. Well, I mean like trees like need oxygen. So I don't mean just like like nature, like things grow, but like what else do you think has consciousness? So I might lose people here. Yeah, we might lose... uh, 15 people in this one, but that's okay. (laughs) So it's easy to think about like plants, animals, Mm -hmm. humans. And not for everybody. Like not everybody can think of plants with consciousness. Yeah, of course. So like it's okay if like this is like bizarro to you. You don't have to think like us. It's totally fine. That's fine. 
you're having your experience at the universe <laughs> through your perspective and it's the same we're all the same but that's okay i see you that you don't i see you you don't have to see we me. wouldn't have this perspective without your unique perspective right you're so. playing a role for the universe that is running a test to prove to itself that love is all you need the beatles had it <laughs> right okay what am I getting at? You asked me a question. I think the Beatles did have it. There's a lot of songs that I'm like, exactly. Right. <laughs> and when, like, they were on psychedelics, too. Right. Like, yeah. see? Drugs are the way. Oh, go careful. <laughs> Jeez. They are. Oh, okay. We have that programming from I, the 80s where you see the frying I know, but I feel you like you pan. need to be careful with that one. From your perspective. From my perspective, yeah. From my perspective, I'm going to say, like... Like, yeah, no. Drugs are the way for some people. Is that better? No, you get to say it how you want it. I'm going to say, like, that does not mean go out and use. That does not mean, like, there's so many people that are struggling with addiction and from drugs that take your life and have family that have lost lives to that. So I, you get to say whatever, but I'm going to be very careful with that and being like, we were talking about going into like opening up minds, opening up possibilities of healing, um, using plant medicine in a sense for like healing and uncovering trauma and going in not like the way that they are abused and hurt and like the damage they have caused. Like I, I just, I, I don't even know how to like careful around that. I just, my alarms went off with that and I was like, oh my gosh, that's like you get to say what you're going to say. My alarms went off. I'm like, that is, there's, I don't, I don't have the verbiage for it. <laughs> I don't have the verbiage. And that's also not to say that talking about psychedelics and psilocybin and like whatever you're going to use for that wouldn't, might not be beneficial to help with the reason. Cause it's not drugs that the reason that people are addicted is because of the trauma that their coping mechanisms, that they're healing, that they're getting like all of that, that they're coming from. So yes, I see how psilocybin and psychedelics used in that way could help heal that, which could help eliminate the addiction. But also I don't know everybody's journey and I'm so scared of saying that and having that hurt somebody. So <laughs> this is a moment in time right? where I get to highlight how you and I are the same person. Right? Because we we're coming high? from the same place. Okay. Well, yeah. So my statement is drugs are the way. And I'm like, ah. And you're like, <laughs> right? We're both trying to, because I'm imagining the listener out there. Yeah. And you're probably doing the same thing. Yeah. Where you're picturing somebody that's listening to this mm -hmm. who suddenly got triggered and upset. And you're like, wait a minute. What was it? <laughs> right? And then I'm picturing the listener out there that's like, yes. Somebody finally speaking truth, somebody validating what I believe, okay. somebody saying, yes, this is actually okay, that drugs are healthy, that drugs are beneficial, that drugs are going to save humanity if we allow them to. It, it was less of, I guess the trigger is the same. It was trigger. I just like, um. So we're both trying to make sure that I the like people are seeing. I literally like have somebody in my head who I know who like is making these posts and trying to speak out and lost her son to fentanyl. And I'm like seeing like how that would hurt her to hear. And I don't want to hurt or somebody who is struggling in active addiction. And that's the one piece that they heard that could lead them to buy, you know what I mean? I just, so it's not like, oh, triggered, somebody's gonna get offended, get offended. But I don't want somebody to, I know I can't control who gets hurt, but I can be like- Compassionate. Yeah, and like, I don't want to cause, <clears throat> um, I don't want a misinterpretation um, to be misapplied and to cause hurt even if that's the journey that is supposed to happen maybe that journey is for me to speak up and say this is not what we're saying here you know or not what i'm saying i don't know i i think we're just going to get too lost on this i don't know how to get into this more i'm like ready to start bawling oh, <laughs> like it's goodness. like making me so like not because of you i'm just like oh like the pain I'm like, and like, see i have compassion for that person <laughs> as well right and <laughs> like there's a part of it that 
I can see the, and obviously drugs aren't for everybody, right? <laughs> obviously, right? One person's medicine is another person's poison. Right? Obviously drugs aren't the answer for everybody. And they might be the answer that brings humanity closer to opening up this beautiful yeah. Pandora's box because they open up a gateway. They take you to a place where you recognize that we're all interconnected. They are not, like nothing in this world is. The one off, like the one. That works for, for everybody. everybody. I disagree. Are you ready? Yeah, you're going to say love. Nope. What are you going to say? Air. Air. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oxygen works for everybody. Right. Okay. Show me somebody that's like, fuck you. I'm not breathing. Right. Cool. <laughs> okay. De definitely doesn't have to work for you. We'll talk to you next mm -hmm. time you come around. But breath is definitely the fix for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> necessary. Right? Totally yeah. necessary. Um, so to like circle back, do you want our kids to know everything about you? <laughs> you like to like ask, make, put me, but don't answer the questions. And then you know that I get too distracted down the road and I can't remember what question you asked That me. is circling back. Right? I had to write it down, so... I wrote it down because I'm like, this is important. I know we're going to do this thing, so I wrote it down. We need to get you another not clicky pin I'm for sorry. the podcast. I'm s you don't have anything to be sorry about. It's okay. We just remember that from previous episodes. Sorry if my What would be a really good fidget spinner crazy. for you? I think my pen works great. Because obviously I got my cards I can hear here. your cards and they're just like driving me loud. Like your cards are just as noisy as my pen. All right, my cards really driving you crazy. No. Okay. If you have any good ideas of what Stephanie can fidget with during the episode, uh, send us an email. I think what Craig is asking for, because his cards don't drive me crazy, is literally what can I do so I don't drive him crazy. Craig is asking you to solve the riddle of what can be done so I don't drive him crazy. <laughs> and he's glaring at me if you're you not watching on YouTube. don't drive me crazy. I just have that part of my brain that thinks about the... The audio, audio the, right? Anyways, you asked me a question. Do I want our yeah. kids to know everything about me? No. Yeah. No. I think there's parts of me that I don't want anybody to know about. And I think that's oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. And I think I want, like, barring those parts of me, then I think I want our kids to... See, because it's a tricky question where yeah. I don't... I don't want our kids to know everything about me without context or without understanding. Like, I don't want to present something about myself unless I get the opportunity to explain it. And the truth is, I don't, right? Yeah. I don't get that opportunity. I don't have that luxury. So I just have to trust that whatever parts of me the kids see or get, or pro like that those are the parts of me that they were supposed to get. Yeah. And like, those are the parts of me that they were, they were supposed to see. And those are the parts of me that will help them on their journey towards this unconditional love place. Because, I mean, that's the really frustrating part as a parent is you want... Like, it's so easy to see for kids. It's so easy to see unconditional love for your children. And probably not for everybody. It's hard for me to imagine that there's a parent out there that doesn't unconditionally love their child. Yeah. They're, they're there. And they're, they, they are there for yeah. sure. Um, but it's really easy for me to see this unconditional love thing through the lens of being a father, right? Because they're good. I mean, they've already made mistakes. They've already done things. Like, kids, if you're listening, you have fucked up. And I still love you. Like, I love you the same amount that I've loved you since the moment I met you. That has never wavered. And it's like, to say that it's increased indicates that in some way that it was less than at some point. <laughs> <laughs> like, my capacity to hold it has increased. There you go. My capacity That's to awareness. hold the love that I have for you has increased. But 
your lovability or that has always been the same. Your worthiness, your like my love infinite. for you has always been, you're right, infinite. It's unconditional mm. and infinite. What is that noise? It's a vehicle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is there a chopper landing right. I can, in our front yard? Because I got this one out. <laughs> okay, so you so can, I can <laughs> Get to the chopper. Right. Right. Anyways, Just... so no, I don't want them to know every part of me, but I trust that the parts of me that they're going to know and that they're going to see, mm -hmm. they will, like, I truly believe this, right? I, I think that that's kind of the nature of it as well, where, because remember, they are the yes. universe having an experience. Right. We just popped out some avatars. That's all right. that we did. We popped out some avatars. Right? We just one day went, there's an avatar. That's it. We just had, we gave birth to another thing for the universe oh, to have an experience. Through. That is like such a, like, it's so funny. I've never once, like, I have full resonation of me being an avatar, but they are miracles and love like they are exact so right so that because i'm like that means you are avatars they're not avatars they are love right? they are the yes miracles. yes yes they are miracles <laughs> right they are, they are beautiful like, lights right? of shining love and glory and, <laughs> they're, and they're avatars perfect. they are the universe have you looked in their eyes <laughs> right exactly <laughs> that's funny and they're literally wow and that's exactly what so you are like whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. See, that's you. Interesting. That's, that's you. you. I know that's me. Oh, good. Good for you. Now I just practice it. Yeah. I practice coming back to that truth. I practice coming back to that knowledge. That's one mm -hmm. thing I've been practicing all this week. Yeah. I've been struggling against it. Yeah. Fighting that ego that tells me otherwise. Yeah. You ain't unconditionally loved. <laughs> Here's all the reasons why. <laughs> and then it runs through the list. And I'm like, well, right. let's start at number one. And it's like, cool, let's start at number one. <laughs> I don't think that one's true. Really? I have another list to prove why that one is right? true. <laughs> Freaking ego. And you're like, okay, let's skip number one. Here's number two, why I'm not worthy of love. Right. I'd like to argue against that. And your ego's like, good, I'm glad you want to argue because I have an entire team of people <laughs> that have counter arguments to everything that you have. <laughs> and then when you confront the ego with, guess what? I'm unconditionally loved no matter what. Mm -hmm. And the ego's like, what do you mean? Because it cannot even begin to imagine. Yeah. Right. I, um, I've been doing something this week that I've tried to make a reel about, and I can't, and that's okay. Because we both know that if you follow us, you know that Craig's the realer. Um, but I'll share it on the podcast because that conversation, I have been losing. I've been like the practice and the amount of work I've been doing, I was rocking the conversation. I was rocking the mirror work, but things have like, I'm processing a lot and I'm not, um, I'm losing that conversation. I'm not winning. The ego is winning. And so I've had to shift up my game because having that conversation with myself is, is it's hurting. So I, I got into this space of like, what do I need? Because hearing it isn't working. Hearing is like, what do I need to feel loved? What do I need for this, for that unconditional love? <laughs> and I was like, um, I, I stumbled across it. It wasn't, you know, it's something that I've done before, but it wasn't a cognitive awareness. I caught myself doing it and brought awareness to it and then like honed in and amplified instead of, um, having those conversations for me, right? Instead of having those conversations right now, I stopped and I started acting towards myself what I needed. And it was like, I had to get like super focused. Like everything is always by expanding your focus, expanding your, your vision and looking beyond. But I had to like, I had to tunnel vision down because my expansion was chaos. And so I was in the shower and oh my goodness, I was literally just like, honoring my body in the shower instead of like scrubbing it like it's dirty like scrubbing it like it's you know just gross and like punishing it for being dirty and punishing it for having hair and just like all this I was just like oh I was like I started to like put soap on my legs nicely and just taking care of myself sweetly and then I was sitting and <laughs> 
<laughs> using the pumice stone on my feet and like it just all honed in and my feet weren't these adult like large woman feet they were itty bitty feet and I just started like being so nice when I was like like loving them and cleaning them and I even like like <laughs> It sounds weird, but I don't care. Just do it. Nobody's going to see you. Like I started like tickling my foot and just like, oh, you're so cute. And just started talking like to my foot. And I'm like, you were so cute. Oh my gosh. I love you so much. Look at your little foot. And just started giving myself all of that because what was happening is I wasn't feeling worthy of love. So I was feeling so unlovable and just I'm struggling on so many levels that I just couldn't access that talk. So I just started accessing the action and let that shift my perspective. And then I would get up into the mirror and do a little bit there and just a little bit, just a little bit because I can't stay with that and then go back to something loving. So whether I'm holding myself or a blanket and I keep going back to my feet because for some reason that's what that's what like clicked for me. Maybe you don't have access to your feet. Try it on your hands. Try it. I don't know, like look at your elbow, look at like some part of you, maybe look at your hair. I don't know, like whatever you have access to or what feels okay for you to focus on. But for me, it was my feet. So I can't do the self-talk, but I can do the love. And so that that's what I'm doing. I'm acting love. <laughs> and yeah. That's really beautiful. Thank you. I'm suddenly very awkward right now. I'm Should we hurry up and move on or do you want to sit in this beautiful <laughs> no, moment? No, that's okay. We can sit in it because, you know. Yeah. Like I, I, it was a big deal. So much so that I tried to create a reel. And every time I was like showing my foot to the camera and like being like, look, and tickling my own foot. I'm like, you are weird. You are weird. And then that talk would come. So finally, I'm like, okay, I can't do this. So I just stopped and then took a moment to actually love myself. It's like, I don't need to document it. (laughs) I don't need to tell anybody how to do it. Do you remember when we (laughs) joked about that, where it would be the OnlyFans uh, of just feet, (laughs) where that was our OnlyFans account? Right. We were just gonna do f- foot porn, right? It's yeah. so much out there. There's, there's out there. So, <laughs> this is not that. No, it wasn't. I mean, you know, do you, you do you? That's really but, pretty, babe. That makes me really happy. Yeah. Like, I'm really grateful that you got to experience that and that mm. that came to you in the moment and that you went with it. Yeah, because that's awesome. And how cute are little kid feet? Right, they're the good as little right. squishy squishers. Anytime you're like putting socks on their little toes and yeah. they're tussling around trying to move and you're just trying to get shoes on their feet. Or <laughs> they don't want shoes. They or... fall up their toes. Mm-hmm. And you're like. <laughs> That's funny too, right? Yeah. Kids definitely don't want to be put into shoes. Right. It's because we're not supposed to. Right. They're like, let my monkeys. toes breathe. Well, <clears throat> this has been an interesting episode of the podcast for mm-hmm. sure. It's not where we thought we were going to go. No. We won't even bother telling you what we were going to talk about on the show (laughs) because we don't have to. But let's go on to the uh, end of the show segment where we answer questions. Okay. You can submit questions to Energy is Love at, just email them to us. (laughs) You can go to the website and click on contact and send us a message through there. Or you can email them directly to us, info at energyislove.love. Or... You can send us messages directly via social media, whether it's on TikTok, if it's going to be around in the future or not. You can send us messages there or on Instagram or Facebook. And that's really all the three socials that we're on. We're not tweeting anybody. So, Did you say TikTok? I did say TikTok. You did? I didn't hear. Like, who knows if it's going to be banned or not, but. I said that too. Did you? Yeah. <gasps> wow. I was, <laughs> Wow. Anyways, this segment, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you can submit questions and we will answer them on the podcast. And if you want your name to be mentioned, please do so. Otherwise, we'll just leave it as anonymous. So this week's question comes from someone that wanted to be left anonymous. Was it about active listing? Because <laughs> I've got the answer. What do you do when your partner repeats the same thing to you that you just said? <laughs> no, this is funny. And this question is... How do I keep from fucking up my kids with my issues? And they just went right, right straight towards it. Right, right? straight towards it. Yeah. Should and we go straight towards the answer? Yeah. Okay. You're you're not. Yep. You're not. There's no way to do it. Yeah. You're you're going to fuck them up. Your issues, and we talked about it on this mm-hmm. episode. Uh, they're going to like you're going to give those 
problems in some <laughs> way, shape, or form to your kids. That's just kind of the way that it goes. It's the nature of the beast of having kids. Now, that well, being said, choose? right, the severity of with which those issues mm -hmm. are transferred onto your children is totally within your control. Yeah. Right? And the opposite is also within your control where it's not just your issues that you're going to be giving your kids. You have the capacity to give them all of these really beautiful things as well. Mm -hmm. All of the qualities of yourself that you might not be able to see right now because you're only focused on your issues. Mm -hmm. You have the capacity to give your kids both sides of the spectrum, the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you what you want to highlight and what you want to focus and what you want to work on. And at the end of the day, like, with 99% of the things that you're going to face, the answer is you've got to do your own work, right? Right, absolutely. You have to come back to yourself and focus on yourself. That is the greatest gift that you can give your kids is working on yourself. Mm -hmm. Really being able to like sit in your shit, sit in your trauma, sit in your uncomfortable, like with help, get help. <laughs> because we all think we know what we're doing. And we let the ego drive the ship without direction and psh, like right off the cliff, right? Do your best to get help. And there's resources out there because, you know, obviously therapists aren't accessible to everyone. Coaches aren't accessible to everyone. But there's something accessible. So be willing to look and get curious and get help in that journey. And just realize also like the awarenesses that you have and the healing that you have, your kids aren't expected to understand and resonate with like you don't have to like the things that you figure out this is one of the mistakes that like I had made at first is when I was uncovering all of like oh trying to give those same lessons <laughs> hey to Taylor Swift it's me I'm the problem <laughs> <laughs> I like was what I thought I was doing was um freeing them with my accountability by telling them everything. I realized I did this and this and this and this. And they're just like, what do you want me to do with all of this? <laughs> you don't have to unload every discovery onto your child. In fact, please don't. Please don't. Just show up differently. Yeah. Like what you are learning and unlearning and unpacking, show up with that energy with them. So when they are healing or they bring something to you, they're getting the best version of you. And you, as long as you keep going, there's always going to be a better version. And that doesn't mean that you're never going to arrive. That just means that when you fuck up and you will, like it's, you're learning. You are learning and there is more of you that you get to do it again. It's not the end of the road. You get to like keep doing better and not feel like I've made this mistake because we all made mistakes. You're not stuck there. You get the opportunity to do it better. Doesn't mean that your kids are going to listen. Doesn't mean that they are now still going to be in your space, but you still, you still do it better. And you are doing it for yourself, yes, because that's how it really integrates. And then your kids really, really benefit. If you're just getting better for them, that's all the pressure on them. It makes it their responsibility and their weight to carry. And that is not something they are going to respond to. I want to that talk does about not feel that good. exact You want to do it? Okay, let's do it. Because I think that uh, they're a great catalyst. So kids are a great mm -hmm. catalyst for change. Whether you're a new parent and you know the baby's, that, that avatar baby is going to pop out soon. <laughs> and that's a great catalyst for you to want to start to become a better person, a better version of yourself. And they, uh, I mean, for both of us, mm -hmm. that's, we have, <clears throat> we have used our children as a driving force for our uh, health and our improvement and wanting to become better so that we're better for, for them. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think, like I said, that's a great catalyst for change and it's a great catalyst for catalyst. growth. And at some point you have to recognize that like you can't change to be a better version for your kids, just like you can't change to be a better version for your partner or for your parents or for society as a whole. Eventually you have to come to the conclusion and the realization that you're just changing because for you, mm -hmm. like you have a relationship with somebody that has been there with you your whole entire life and it's yourself and you want to become a better version so that that relationship is healthy and strong and 
the sooner you can like separate the mentality of like, I'm doing this for my kids or I don't want to pass on these things to like, that's all fine and there's no judgment, but like eventually you've got to get to that point where you're doing it for yourself and your kids are going to benefit from that. Like that's the beautiful part where they just like by being, you know, your kids and they're not your kids, right? <laughs> by being the offspring of you, they're going to benefit from it. So just work on yourself. Just work on yourself and be loving and compassionate and kind to yourself and be honest and truthful and accountable when you make mistakes. And when you mm -hmm. say you're going to show up differently, do the best that you can to show up differently. Show up differently. And yeah, but don't be hard. I mean, you're going to make mistakes. <laughs> you're <laughs> going to fuck up and mistakes. pass on all sorts of wonderful things yeah. that your kids, the good and the bad. Yeah. So it's a good question. It's hard. It is. I, I want to add one more to that um, of doing it for yourself, of showing up for yourself. And another like beautiful benefit that I see coming from that. When we're doing it for somebody else, again, the catalyst is great, but you're showing them still that I'm not worth this. I'm only worth this because I'm doing it for you. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing it for yourself, you're showing them that example of self-love that, oh, I get to love myself for me. So they're learning that confidence and that worth is within them and coming from within them by watching you do that. Because that whole thing, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Like, how about <laughs> do like show them do as I do? Because all those kids, they're like, oh, you told me not to do this, but I'm watching you and that's what I'm going to do. So like show them that, that self-love and that they're worth it. They're going to want, they're watching, they're watching. They're watching the good. They're watching the bad. They see it. Yeah, they're like the little scientist that's yeah. like, wait a minute. You said that, but yeah. then you did this. And we're also talking about like offspring. Like that, I would just want to like that language. That does not mean that you have to have birthed them or that contributed to their genetics. Like that is not what makes a parent in the slightest so and make sure that we are we have that completely open again submit your questions anytime yeah. and we'll answer them live on the podcast and thank you for hanging in there and enjoying this episode hopefully as always it would be like super cool of you and we would greatly appreciate it if this resonated with you and you kind of dig the podcast to go subscribe wherever you're listening and leave us a review. Like click the thing that says the thing and then you can say the things about how you dig this podcast mm -hmm. and give it five stars or whatever the rating system is on whatever platform it is <laughs> that you listen to and then share the podcast with somebody else in the real world. Like say, hey, friend, <laughs> you should listen to this podcast. I think you might like it. And that helps us immensely. So tune in next week to see what else we uncover. 